Hallelujah. Lift your hand one more time. Father, we thank you. In this present, we thank you that you are here. Thank you, God. We give you permission to move however you want to move in this place. We thank you for your love, your agape love. Sober us, ready us to hear. Loose my tongue that I may be to articulate what you want to share to your people this morning. We are so thankful for grace, so thankful for mercy. We thank you that healing is still the children's bread. So we speak healing and declare healing over your people now. We thank you, O oh God, that you would not fail us. So we thank you for provisions for your people. So as we engage your word this morning, may the heavens be open. Speak, Holy Spirit, as we continue to seek your face. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And it's in Jesus' name. Give your king some praise right where you are. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. God is so good. I want to thank God for being my source. Amen. Without him, I don't know where I would be. So before I can do anything, I have to give homage to the only God that deals with me when I'm not up here. He's a good God. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for my beautiful wife. Hallelujah. We are on this journey of marriage. And I can truly say that when I got down and, and asked you to marry me, it was the best decision I ever made in my life. <laughs> Outside of me giving my life to Christ, because no one is above him. But you're the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> Amen. I want to thank God for my pastor, Dr. Chanel D. Felder, and his, for his leadership. Amen. We truly have a pastor after his own heart. I want to thank God for Reverend Jean and Ma and Pa Felder. Amen. Without them, there would be no us here. I want to thank God for Reverend Powell, Reverend Vines, and his absent. Reverend Jerry. I want to thank God for all the ministry team here. Amen. Because without them, there would be no me. I want to thank God for the kings on the Wednesday night Bible study. We truly have some awesome men. And I want to thank God for their, their leadership, their tenacity, their vigor. They sharpen me every Wednesday night. I want to thank God for my mom, my dad, my siblings, and a host of relatives and friends. I send you my love. There is a word for the people of God this morning. And so the scripture has already been read. We're in John chapter 9, verse 1 through 9. Allow me to teach this morning. Amen. In this text, there is a man that was born in the dark. This man can hear, but not see with his eyes. He was born in darkness. Let's be clear. Darkness is not a curse. It's just the absence of light. It's one thing to be able to see and then go blind. It's another thing to spend nine months in the dark 
and come out to the same thing you've been in for months. Alone in the dark, thinking, will I ever be able to see? Will I ever be able to be changed? Is change even evable for me? Thinking, will change come? Thinking, every time you do it for me, God, I mess it up. A 16-year-old mistake has now become a 26-year-old mistake. A 26-year-old mistake has now become a 36-year-old mistake. A 40-year-old mistake still has the remnants of a 36-year-old mistake. Am I ever going to be able to see the way they say I'm supposed to see? In this text, this man is conceived in darkness, born in darkness. He is employed as a beggar in darkness and is a topic of many conversations. And I don't understand, New Faith, why darkness is so attractive to people's dialogue. But it gives people something to talk about. So what I love about this text is how it opens up in this darkness, it states. As they pass by, he can't see, but he can hear clearly the sounds of footsteps. Imagine with me right now. You're blind physically, but you can hear Perfect. The sounds of footsteps. Strange footsteps that you don't even know who they are. But you hear a change is coming. That's the sound that he hears. He's never ever been able to see. But he hears clearly that something is coming his way. Isn't it amazing how you could be in one season of your life that you can't see how things are going to turn out in your favor, but you can hear clearly that God is up to something. I can't see it happening, but something is going to happen. In his darkness, this is very interesting, Reverend Powell, because in the previous chapter, Jesus was living, was leaving the temple because they were going to stone him. So he was, he was retreating, and as he escaped away, in the middle of him withdrawing, he sees him in his darkness. Now that may not be anything to you, but if you ever had to escape from something, the first thing you're thinking about is yourself. You're not thinking about helping somebody else, but in the middle of him running out of the temple, he passed by me. And the Bible says that he saw me. Don't run past that three little word because the hardest thing in your life sometimes is to be seen in your own life. Thinking to yourself, when will it happen for me? When are things going to change for me? When will I arrive to the destination that I have pursued my whole life for? You start looking around at your peers. He's already there. She's already there. But where is the God that they say that can move mountains? I'm stuck in darkness. I have pushed up, I have pushed down, and I have pushed all around, and I still haven't made it. I brought every book, I listened to every sermon, I prayed, I fasted, and I'm still not there. I'm not talking about y'all, I'm talking about myself this morning. So I know how it feels to, to be on constant recycle, constant repeat. 
You're constantly going, but you're not there. You're almost there, but then God allows you sometimes to visit that place, but you still haven't arrived. So the Bible says that he saw him. Have you ever thought to yourself that I just want to be seen? I just want to be seen in my marriage. I just want to be seen by my children. I want to be seen in my career. I want to be seen. I'm not suggesting that I want to be famous, but just seen. The Bible says that hope deferred make a heart sick. I want to be seen. And God wants his children to know this morning that he sees you right where you are. Turn to someone and say that he sees you. That's your word this morning, that he sees you. He sees you crying. He sees you in your circumstances. He sees you trying to get it together. He sees you on repeat. He sees you on recycle. He sees you tearing up. He sees you wanting to give up. He sees you running from the issue. He sees you medicating yourself with another issue. He sees you trying to figure out and you say, Lord, I don't know how much more I can take. But then he said, I see you. Lift your hands right now and say, thank you, God, for seeing me. And the truth is, if we could be honest, some of us can't stand to see our own self. Because of all the things we have done in our past, because we think people know our business, because we feel unworthy to be at this pulpit or singing or playing or doing anything. We think people know our business. But this text lets me know that God is able to see me like this. It lets me know how much he really loves me. Now I really get it, Reverend Powell. What people say that, that God looks in the heart, but they look on the outward appearance. So what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that God sees you. He sees you right where you are. So New Faith, I want us not to think that we have to dress up or hide our wounds. I came here to tell you this morning that God loves you. He loves you with the wounds. He loves you with the circumstances. He loves you with the issue. God loves you in your darkness. I'm telling you that you don't have to put on makeup for God because he sees you right where you are. And God says, that I'm going to love you right where you are. I don't want you to stay that way, but it's my love that will flip the script in your life. But he's saying that you have to come to me just the way you are. And I'll take your life. And I'll take your issue. And I'll take your dark thing. And I will use it for my glory. If you know that he saw you, give him some praise. If you know that you saw you, give him some glory. And I'm not talking about that dressed up you. I'm talking about that dark you, that torn down you. I'm talking about the you that got issues. He said, I saw you. 
I see you. And contrary to what people may think, being seen is not self-consuming, but it tells you that you are alive. It tells you that you're worth something in this relationship. Jesus comes by just to simply say, hey, I see you. The Bible says that the disciples are talking because their situation is a magnet for conversation. The Bible says that who sinned? Him or the parents? Now the question is very basic, but the basic questions sometimes get lost in transition. Who sinned? So what they're saying is that somebody must have sinned. And this is what people do. They will engage you without seeing you and trying to diagnose your darkness while ignoring their own darkness. They don't even know how you got to that place. But they know that you sinned. That you are unworthy. Who sin? Is my circumstance that bad that you got a revelation? That my suffering and sin comes to birth who God is to me? Who sin? That three letter word. Let's me know that those people were not from the world, but from the church. I would rather you use a curse word so I know that you're from the world. But the fact that you said sin lets me know that you are blessed and highly favored. sin. It's sad to say that your greatest enemy might not come from those who are trying to rob you, but those with a collar and a badge. This beggar is in darkness, and his darkness of unwanted indivisibility, unwanted indivisibility is a a phrase that we use in psychology often because it lets you know that if you are unwanted and invisible, that people will walk right past you. So what happened is, it, is when you are left in rejection alone, left in rejection publicly, you find that people will walk right past you and won't even care. It's one thing to be rejected and isolated. It's another thing to be rejected around people that say they love you. You find that some people do a great job reminding you that you are invisible. It happens every day. They walk around you, forgetting that you have the same blood that they have. You cannot validate your visibility off them saying that you are credible. Because listen, you have a season to come into. We're taking territory in 2023. So if you allow what people say about you, and contrary to how God sees you, you're going to forfeit the promises that God has been destined for you. And sometimes, sometimes, Marlene, that darkness is a blessing. 
Why do you say that, Brother Philip? Why do you say that? I'll tell you. If that blind beggar wasn't a blind beggar, then he wouldn't have not been where Jesus passed by. If he could have seen, his eyes may have distracted him from something else. If he hadn't been in the darkness that he was in, maybe he wouldn't have been so desperate for the light. You see that he was desperate for the physical light, but he was desperate for the light, Jesus. Jesus said that I am the light of the world. So his desperateness attracted Jesus. I wonder how many of you are sitting here in these purple seats are desperate for him. I wonder will your desperateness attract the king of kings to come in? He said that where two or three are gathered in his name, that he is in the midst. Psalm 63, verse 1 through 4, talks about the desperation of a believer. David said, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and behold your power and glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift my hands. So every moment when things are good, when things are bad, you need to worship him. You need to tell the enemy nothing, I mean nothing, would take away my praise or my worship. Money would not take it. A woman would not take it. Success would not take it. There is nothing I'm going through that would take away what God has for me. If you believe that, give him some glory right there. If you believe that, give him some praise right there. This man was born without. Say without. So it was normal to see a man that could see and then go blind. But it was abnormal for a man to be born blind. As he was born blind, he is not like the other people in the Bible. This guy is not even looking for Jesus. He just is in the darkness. And I thought to myself, you mean to tell me that God would come looking for me when I'm not looking for him? You mean to tell me that he would walk right in my situation and heal me without me asking him? You mean to tell me that my God would supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, which is Christ Jesus? Then I thought to myself, all of us are blind to something. Because if the scriptures are right, which they are, that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the hearts of, the, of man the things that God has prepared for them who loves them. Then all of us are blind to some things that God has planned for us. That's why we have to walk by faith, not by sight. Even when we are blind to something, that is the best time to pursue God. The best time to pursue God's light is when we are in darkness. The best time to pursue God's light is when we still have that issue. The best time to pursue God is when we still are holding to the thing that has kept us captive. God has opened our eyes new faith that can only be visible for those who are in search of him. 
I wonder, are you in search of him this morning? Pastor has declared that we are taking territory. So there are some territories that you can't see with your physical eye. So you got to trust your spirit, man, to lead you and guide you when you can't see him or trust him. So I want to look at the scripture as being without. He was born without sight. And some of us in this room has been born without courage. We were born without experiencing what love truly means. We were born without a home, born without care, born without identity. And you really don't know who you are until you get to know the love of Christ. And if I could be honest to you, that I didn't know who I was until I gave my life over to Christ. And I didn't give, in, give my life over into, in the church it was in a basement at a repast where there was no lights, where there was no cameras, but God met me in my vulnerability. He met me in my darkness. And my life has never been the same. So in order to find out who you are, you have to allow God to guide you in the darkest places of your life. For the Bible says that the steps of a good man, a good woman, has been ordered by God. So even though you're going through a dark season in your life, God would use that dark season to position you right where he needs you to be. So you have to relinquish your control. You have to let God lead you, which is the way that will give you power and encouragement to take territory in 2023. And maybe, just maybe, that you have survived a season in your life without knowing who God is and was. And maybe he allowed that darkness, that vulnerability, to create an opportunity for the Messiah to come into your life and transform you right where you are. Had it not been in the dark, maybe you wouldn't have been blind to the fact that God has a plan for your life. Let's be honest. I don't want what I used to want. I no longer have a taste for the sin. It's there every day, but my taste buds have lost the taste of it. For behold, I have become new. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are. So the blind beggar's life is in darkness, and Jesus sees him right where he is. Now, there's a conversation that's going on with the disciples and Jesus. And what Jesus does is so beautiful. The disciples are talking among themselves. And Jesus used the conversation as an opportunity for him to include himself in the life of the man. This is when you know that somebody who is talking about you truly loves you. The talking moves from talking about you to to you. When they don't care about you, they never come to you. They always talk about you. But when they truly love you, they will come towards you. So when Jesus comes towards this man, he tells the disciple, this man has not sinned, nor his parents. Jesus tells the disciples that this is about to be a display of the glory of God. 
So what Jesus does is so miraculous. He takes the spit. And he takes the mud. And he puts it on his eyes. And he says, go and wash. Jesus says, go and wash. And I thought to myself when I read this text, how can this man do this? He's blind. So I asked God. God didn't say anything. I asked Google. Because we know Google has every answer, right? Google didn't say anything. So I start praying about the revelation, Dr. Craig. So then I go back to the text in the Bible. And I said, I don't know. And God said, that's the answer. I don't know how I got where I am today. And when I start thinking about the blessings that have fallen on my life, when I have thinking about the provision that God has given to me, when I think about his glory that he has bestowed upon me, my hands lifted up. My mouth declares that he is good and faithful. Hallelujah. There was no strategy. There was no connection. There was no hookup. It was only by the grace of God. And if you could be honest, be true to yourself. The only way that you are here sitting in those purple seats is by the grace of God. You can't track it. You can't find it. You search all over. But when you think about the grace of God, when you think about his love that has spilled out for you for a thousand generations and a thousand more, there's nothing you can do that can repay the awesome price of what God has done for you. Hallelujah. So God will open up a door for you. He will close a door for you. He will kick open the window for you. He will pour out blessings and blessings and blessings and blessings. Not because you're black. Not because you're white. Not because you're about to be a doctor. But because by the grace of God, he will bestow it upon you. So I go to chapter 8 of John, and I look at that he was in the dirt. And if you know your Bible, which I know you do, John 8 is a story of a woman who was caught in adultery. And your Jesus, my Jesus, was down in the dirt writing something. We don't know what it was. And then I remind myself in Genesis chapter 2 that God dug his hand in the dirt and he breathed life into the dirt and from the dust of the ground he formed man and I remind myself today that God's word has created us in his image and his likeness that when we look in the mirror we are just like him and now I see that the mud and the spit that was put in the the blind beggar's eyes was taking him from darkness to vision. And it hits me, and it makes me want to give him praise. Because I'm so thankful all over again. Because God specialized in bringing men and women out of dirty places. And if you've never been in a dirty place, you can't clap. But if you've ever been in a dirty place, a bad divorce, a bad marriage, abuse, rejection, drugs, any care what, I don't care what it is, 
whatever dirty place it is that will lift, that will make you lift your hands and give him praise. Because if without God in your life, that dirt, that stain, that issue will be there right where you stand. So as I close, I want to offer you a God that will bring you into the light. I'm not offering you religion, but I'm offering you the God of the light. If you need God to lighten up your life, you have a call. You have the floor. God's light is this undiscriminatory. He doesn't care how old you are. He doesn't care how big you are. He doesn't care how much degrees you have. But if that's you right where you are, I want to offer you a God that will bring you into the light. And you may say, I'm safe. But if you got any dark issues in your life, I want to offer you Jesus. So right where you are, if that's you, just want you just to know that his light is here. He knows you by name. He knows your situation. He knows your habit. He knows your secret. And he still says, I want you even more. And if that's where you are, we welcome you into the marvelous light. 